Discovery of Proton I will teach you the super easy method to master discovery of proton. First of all, we will learn about the cathode ray tube. Cathode ray tube contains five parts. The first part of cathode ray tube is a glass tube. We take gas in it like hydrogen gas. Remember that hydrogen gas helps electrons flow smoothly in the tube. The second part of cathode ray tube is vacuum pump. We use vacuum pump to decrease the gas pressure inside the glass tube. For example, we use vacuum pump to decrease the gas pressure to 10 raised to the power minus 3 mm of Hg. The third part of cathode ray tube is metallic strips like cathode which is negatively charged and anode which is positively charged. The fourth part of cathode ray tube is a high voltage source like a battery. We use high voltage to ionize the gas inside the glass tube. For example, we need 10,000 voltage to ionize the hydrogen gas. The fifth and the last part is ammeter. It is used to detect the flow of current inside the cathode ray tube. Thus we learn that we take hydrogen gas in the glass tube. Secondly, we decrease the pressure of gas to 10 raised to the power minus 3 mm of Hg using a vacuum pump. Thirdly, we place two metallic strips, cathode and anode, inside the glass tube. Fourthly, we use high voltage source like a battery to produce 10,000 voltage to ionize the gas. Finally, we use ammeter to detect the flow of current inside the cathode ray tube. Now we will quickly revise the concept of electron discovery which will help us to master discovery of proton. We know that J.J. Thomson took a cathode ray tube. He made a small hole in the anode. He coated the big side of the anode by zinc sulfide or fluorescent screen. He then provided 10,000 voltage. As a result of this, the emitter deflected and cathode rays started flowing from cathode towards anode. These cathode rays passed through the anode and hit the fluorescent screen, due to which glow produced on the fluorescent screen. Remember that these rays are called cathode rays because they are generated by the cathode. Later, different experiments reveal that these cathode rays are negatively charged, which we called electrons. Thus, Thomson Baba successfully discovered the cathode rays, which we call electron. If you want to learn more about cathode rays and discovery of electron, watch our video and its link is given in the description. Before discovery of proton, first of all, we need to learn discovery of canal rays. In 1886, a German physicist, Goldstein, discovered canal rays. He took a cathode ray tube. He performed the opposite experiment. Instead of anode, he made a hole in the cathode. He coded the back side of the cathode using fluorescent screen or zinc sulfide. Then he provided high voltage like 10,000 voltage. As a result of this high voltage, he observed that something from the anode is flowing towards the cathode. I mean, he observed that some rays travels in the opposite direction to the well-known negatively charged cathode rays, due to which glow produced on the screen. He called these rays as anode rays because these rays were produced by the anode. Also remember that these rays were traveling opposite to the cathode rays. Secondly, these anode rays are also known as canal rays because they pass through the canals or holes in the cathode. Secondly, Goldstein Baba performed an experiment to find the nature of canal rays. For example, consider this external electric field. 
Gulstein Baba passed these canal rays through the external electric field. As a result, he observed that canal rays bend towards negative plate. It shows that canal rays are positively charged. Similarly, these canal rays also deflected in magnetic field in a direction opposite to the cathode rays. Remember that in absence of electric and magnetic field, cathode rays move in straight line. So we can say that Goldstein Baba was the first person who observed positive particles inside atom. Let me repeat it. Goldstein Baba was the first person who observed positive particles inside atom. Also remember this very very important point. He didn't use the word proton. That's why we say that Goldstein Baba didn't discover the proton. He only discovered canal rays which give the first proof that positive particles exist inside atom. Note it down that this story doesn't end here. Another Baba, Rutherford Baba, took this discovery even further and discovered proton. Now we will learn Rutherford's approach who discovered proton. In 1917, Rutherford Baba took alpha particles and nitrogen atom. We know that alpha particles are like helium nuclei which has two protons and two neutrons. Secondly, the nitrogen atom has seven protons and seven neutrons. He performed a nuclear reaction. I mean, he bombarded the nitrogen atom by alpha particles. Rutherford Baba observed that a high speed particle hit the screen. For example, when alpha particles collided with a nitrogen nucleus, the nitrogen nucleus absorbed the alpha particle for a short period of time and formed an excited fluorine 18. The fluorine 18 is highly unstable. It decays into oxygen 17 and hydrogen nucleus. From this experiment, Rutherford Baba concluded that this high speed traveling particle which collided with the screen is hydrogen nucleus and he called this hydrogen nucleus as proton. Remember that this was the first time a nuclear reaction produced proton. It proved that proton is the fundamental particle inside the nucleus. Also remember that this was the first nuclear reaction in which Rutherford Baba artificially converted one atom to another. Like he converted nitrogen to oxygen 17. This discovery opened doors to modern nuclear physics, radioactivity, fission and fusion. Finally, let me teach you one of my favorite questions. Who discovered proton and when? Well, the answer is Rutherford Baba. Rutherford Baba discovered proton in 1917. Remember that many students say Goldstein discovered proton. It is totally wrong. He discovered canal rays, not the proton. Hence, this was all about the discovery of proton.